At Granger, we're for the ones who pay attention to every little detail, the ones who fuss, tinker, and sweat the small stuff. Because you know the tiniest thing can make the biggest difference when it comes to keeping business moving. We get it. We're the same way. Offering access to product experts to help you quickly and easily find what you need. So whatever your industry, you know you're always getting professional-grade products. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. From the wilderness of Kodiak Island, Alaska, this is Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier with your host, Robin Bearfield. In a land full of peril and vicious animals, humans are the most dangerous predators of all. Linda Skeek had three beautiful children and an excellent job, but she did not have a good marriage. However, Linda's relationship with her husband, Thomas, seemed somewhat improved on New Year's Eve 2015. They loaded their kids in their new Navigator SUV and drove to downtown Anchorage to see the fireworks. They watched the movie Minions on the Navigator's DVD player until the New Year's festivities began. Linda texted with her sisters and posted photos of her family on Facebook. However, not long after midnight and at the beginning of 2016, Linda's texts and Facebook posts stopped and no one saw or heard from her again. Welcome to Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier. I'm your host, Robin Bearfield, and I'm broadcasting to you from the heart of the Kodiak National Wildlife Refuge on Kodiak Island in Alaska. In 2016, 34 people were killed by homicide in Anchorage. Serial killer James Dale Ritchie was responsible for five of the murders, and some others were drug or gang-related. Authorities considered Linda Skeek's disappearance the first homicide of the year. Linda's body has never been found, though, so why do investigators think she was murdered? They can find no digital or any other trail to suggest Linda is still alive, and friends and family say Linda would never have left her children. Linda Skeek grew up in southeastern Alaska. She had a rough childhood and struggled with substance abuse, mainly alcohol. At age 14, she was removed from her home and placed with a foster family named Sims. The Sims family accepted Linda as one of their own, and she enjoyed a strong support system. Linda entered rehab several times, but could not stay away from alcohol. Her foster mother, Rita Sims, said, She had addictions, but she was striving to clean her life up. She had a fantasy to be whole. Sims added, She was an extremely thoughtful person, respectful to others. That's why she could always get such good employment. She loved kids and didn't forget a birthday. She was a tremendous daughter. That doesn't mean she didn't have her difficulties, but she was very well loved and gave love back. The Skeeks lived in Juneau until mid-2015 when the Nana Corporation, an Alaska Native social economic group based in Anchorage, offered Linda a good job. Linda's oldest daughter stayed with her father in Juneau. But Linda, Thomas, and their two young children moved to Anchorage, where Linda was the breadwinner and Thomas stayed home with the kids. The Skeek marriage had serious problems, and Linda began binge drinking, sometimes leaving home on Friday and not returning until Sunday. She always made it home in time to go to work on Monday, but her frequent absences strained the marriage even further. In November 2015, Linda pointed a loaded gun at her husband in front of her seven-year-old daughter. The same month, she filed for a protective order against Thomas for herself and her two young children. She said Thomas grabbed her by the arm and pushed her, leaving bruises on her chest. Ten days after she filed the petition, she withdrew it, and she and Thomas reconciled. 
While Linda and Thomas were separated in November, Linda began having an affair. She continued her affair even after she got back with Thomas. Thomas was also having an affair in late 2015. Despite their difficulties, Linda made enough money to allow the family to move into a comfortable apartment on Morningside Loop in South Anchorage. In late 2015, the Skeeks purchased a Lincoln Navigator SUV. On New Year's Eve 2015, Linda, Thomas, and their two kids celebrated the holiday by driving to downtown Anchorage to watch the fireworks. While they waited for the show to begin, they watched the movie Minions on the Navigator's DVD player. While the kids watched their movie, Linda texted and posted on Facebook. She posted a photo of her kids and wrote, Watching Minions Before the Fireworks. It's too cold for us to be outside. Spoil little family. Two of Linda's sisters said they traded texts with Linda until midnight. But the text stopped soon after the new year began. According to Thomas, and backed up by surveillance video footage, he drove Linda to several bars after the fireworks show ended. While she bar hopped, he stayed in the SUV with the kids. Thomas said they returned home around 1 a.m. and put the kids to bed. Thomas said Linda continued to drink alcohol when they got home, and then she wanted to drive back downtown and return to the bars. Thomas said he refused to give her the keys to the navigator. He said they argued, and then Linda walked out of the house and into the snowy Anchorage night. Thomas said he thought she would either cool down and return home or find her way to a bar, and the family wouldn't see her for, for a few days. When Linda disappeared, she was carrying only her Alaska identification card and approximately $40 in cash. She had no debit or credit cards with her, and Thomas had the only cell phone in the family. According to bank records, Linda's accounts showed no financial activity from when she disappeared until January 11th, when bank surveillance cameras showed Thomas Geek making the transactions. If Linda walked away from her home in the early morning of January 1, 2016, what happened to her? Was Thomas Geek telling the truth when he said she left, or did Thomas do something to Linda? Thomas Geek did not report Linda missing until January 4th, when Linda's foster mother, Rita Sims, pressed him to go to the police. When Thomas told Rita that Linda was missing, he said, They'll never find her. Rita repeatedly asked Thomas if he'd murdered Linda, and Thomas once replied, I don't think so. Sim said, You don't think so? Thomas quickly said, No, I did not murder Linda. The Anchorage police did not immediately begin investigating Linda's disappearance. Linda's propensity to go on drinking sprees and disappear for several days probably caused the police to believe she would eventually return home. Finally, on January 14th, they focused on her as a missing person. They interviewed Thomas again, and he said he had no idea where his wife was. They then looked at the family cell phone and found that Linda's Gmail account had been deleted as well as call logs from June 25th to January 4th. Detectives scoured the Skeek family finances and learned that Thomas had recently bought an industrial-sized bottle of Lysol at Lowe's. Lysol is often used to clean up crime scenes. Thomas also bought ammonia and Clorox from the Fred Meyer store. Thomas allowed the investigators to look at his body to see if he had any markings consistent with the struggle. They found a three-inch long scratch on his back, a human bite mark on his right arm, and bruises and marks on his neck, collarbone, back, and hip. On January 20th, crime scene investigators finally searched the Skeek's apartment and vehicle. 
they found blood evidence near an entrance to a crawl space in the Skeek's apartment. Linda Skeek's father, who had stayed with the Skeek family for a few days after Linda disappeared, told the detectives that he saw Thomas enter and leave the crawl space. Thomas said he was looking for artwork he had stored somewhere. The cramped entrance to the crawl space could explain the scratch on Thomas's back. Investigators entered the crawl space and found a bloody fingerprint on a vapor barrier inside the cramped area. They also found blood stains in the bathroom and blood someone had attempted to clean on a kitchen wall. In the dryer, the investigators found clothing washed with too much bleach. In the SUV, detectives found a small amount of blood on the passenger side of the vehicles. Detectives interview one of the Skeek's neighbors, and she said she saw Linda Skeek walking on the roadway away from the couple's apartment at 11.48 p.m. on New Year's Eve. She said she was certain of the time because she was a designated driver and was late to pick up friends. She also claimed she saw Thomas Skeek standing in the doorway of the Skeek residence. This witness report did not match anyone's timeline for the events surrounding Linda's disappearance. According to Thomas, he, Linda, and the kids watched fireworks in downtown Anchorage at midnight. Then he drove Linda to a series of bars before driving home at 1 a.m. Thomas and Linda were not home at 1148, so the witness was either wrong about the time or mistaken about what she saw. Nevertheless, at trial, the defense put the neighbor lady on the stand to testify about Linda walking down the road at 11.48 p.m. Another witness, the neighbor who lived above the Skeek's apartment, told the police she'd heard Thomas Skeek yelling that he would kill his wife. Then she heard the sounds of a struggle, followed by thudding noises. She said Thomas was yelling and swearing at Linda and Linda told Thomas she wanted a divorce. Next, the neighbor heard glass breaking and things being thrown, and then she heard a loud bang, followed by silence. The most interesting and heartbreaking account came from the Skeek's seven-year-old daughter. She said she woke up and wanted a drink of water in the early morning hours of January 1st. She darted down the stairs and saw her mother's feet in the downstairs bathroom, with blood all around them. Nearly three weeks after Linda Skeek disappeared, police arrested Thomas Skeek and charged him with first- and second-degree murder and tampering with physical evidence. This was not the first time Thomas had been charged with a felony. Before he married Linda, prosecutors charged and convicted him of the attempted sexual abuse of a minor, a 15-year-old girl. As a result, Thomas was a registered sex offender. The prosecutors knew that without a body, they would have a difficult time proving murder. In the last 30 years in Alaska, only a few murder cases lacking the victim's body have gone to trial, and most proved difficult for the prosecution. One was a case I profiled in one of my first episodes of this podcast, The Disappearance of Laura Henderson. Lauren disappeared in Kodiak, and after two trials, a jury found Laura's husband, Jack Eibach, and another man, Mac McDonald, guilty of murdering Laura. The judge sentenced them both to long prison terms. In 2001, Rocky Seaman, an alleged drug dealer from Kenai, was charged with the murder of his brother's girlfriend. Her body was never found. A jury deadlocked on the murder charge, but convicted him of conspiracy. The judge sentenced him to more than 70 years in prison. In 2003, in a case I will cover in an upcoming episode, it took three trials to send Billy D. Smith to prison for 99 years for the murder of Harold Insler and Nancy Bellamy. Police believe Smith shot the couple to death, chopped up their bodies with an axe, and disposed of their remains in the ocean near Homer. Prosecutors knew they were facing an uphill battle in attempting to convict Thomas Skeek for the murder of his wife. 
Linda had a history of leaving home and going on binges. Maybe she did it again, and this time she ran into the wrong person. Thomas was lucky to be assigned a good defense lawyer named Emily Cooper. Cooper instilled doubt at every turn in the trial. She repeatedly asked the jury, Without a body? How do we know she's dead? Prosecutors James Fayette and Saritha Angelville told the jury in their opening statement that Thomas Skeek killed his wife in the early hours of January 1, 2016. He then disposed of her body and reported her missing to the police. The defense countered by saying that the state could not even prove Linda Skeek was dead. Defense attorney Emily Cooper said, What happened to her after she walked off on New Year's Day 2016? We may never know, but my client did not murder his wife. Cooper told the jury that Linda walked angry and drunk into the snowy Anchorage night where any number of dangers could have happened to her. Cooper also said the Anchorage Police Department delayed investigating Linda's disappearance for several days after Thomas reported her missing. During the lag and response, crucial evidence, such as additional surveillance video and physical evidence, could have vanished. The police might have also found essential witnesses during those critical few days after Linda disappeared. The prosecutors pointed out the large jugs of Clorox, ammonia, and Lysol that Thomas had purchased. They said Thomas bought these items to clean up the blood in his house and vehicle. The prosecution called the neighbor who lived directly above the Skeek's apartment to testify, and she told the jury about the terrible fight she'd heard emanating from the Skeek residence. She said Thomas Skeek yelled that he would kill his wife. Then she heard a struggle and loud thudding sounds, and then the noises suddenly stopped. Linda's sisters described how they'd exchanged texts with Linda on New Year's Eve, but they heard nothing from her the next day or ever again. In her closing argument, Emily Cooper detailed some of the many things that could have happened to Linda Skeek. She could have fallen victim to a random act of violence, been hit by a drunken driver who disposed of her body, purposely disappeared, or injured herself somehow. The judge handed the case to the jury, and they deliberated for three days before returning a verdict of not guilty of first-degree murder, second-degree murder, manslaughter, or tampering with evidence. Linda Skeek's family wept as they left the courtroom, and her aunt said the verdict was a complete shock to them. She said that Linda is the third person in her family to be murdered, and no killer was brought to justice in any of the cases. She said this has made her feel really bad about the justice system. She said, I just wish and hope other families don't have to go through what our family has gone through. What happened to Linda Skeek? Did something evil befall her when she stumbled drunkenly down the road on a frigid Anchorage night in search of another bar? Did a drunk driver kill her and then have the wherewithal to dispose of her body? Did Linda walk out of her life and leave her children, family, and friends behind? These scenarios seem unlikely. Even though the jury found Thomas guilty, Linda was likely a victim of domestic violence, a far too common crime in Alaska. If Thomas killed Linda, though, how did he get away with murder? Linda was not a small woman. She stood 5 foot 10 inches and weighed 200 pounds. The Skeeks lived in an apartment building, so if Thomas killed Linda, how did he dispose of her body? Perhaps he cut her into pieces and put her in several bags. If he stored the bags in the crawl space where the police found the blood and Thomas's father-in-law watched him enter and exit, then he could dispose of the bags a few at a time and escape the watchful eyes of his neighbors. We will likely never know if Thomas Skeek murdered his wife. We can only hope that Thomas learns to manage his anger and that nothing like this ever again happens to one of his partners.
Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you to my patrons for your support. Check out the show notes for more information on how you can support this podcast and unlock extra episodes by joining the Last Frontier Club. If you haven't already done it, be sure to join the Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier Facebook group and chat about the podcast. I'll see you soon for the next episode of Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier.